I'm making this little video because of how sad I am seeing fellow players killing themselves in either Stuka dive bombers or other types of dive bombers. So with this little video I hope I'll help everybody out so they'll be able to pull out and pull up in time and not kill themselves in the process. And yeah, I guess I can be a pun. War Thunder gives you access to four different kinds of Stuka dive bombers. Two sits at 1.7, one at 2.7 and the last one at 3.3. The first Duke dive bomb you get access to is the B2 model. It has two 7.92mm machine guns with 1000 rounds for both of them. It also has a rearward facing machine gun, also 7.92. Top speed is 380km per hour, not in a dive of course. The B2 can mount bombs ranging from 50kg to 500kg. The smaller 50 kilogram ones can be hung onto the wings, while the bigger ones from 250 to 500 need to be mounted center line. You can mount the bombs in three different ways, and that is the least of all of the Stukas. Second on the list is the R model. Now the R model and the B model are pretty much identical. Same two machine guns in the wings, and the rear gunner has the same machine gun. But the R model cannot mount uh, bombs under the wings. The R stands for Reichweiß in German, which means range along range. Originally, you're supposed to put drop tanks underneath the wings, but you don't do that in War Thunder, it's not necessary. So instead, you have access to a 1000 kg bomb you can mount onto the center. And again, you have three options to mount bombs either 250 a 500 kilogram bomb or a massive 1000 kilogram bomb and that is pretty crazy for 1.7 now with a 1000 kilogram bomb you can kill several vehicles at this BR at the same time also higher BR if they're close enough together and it has a pretty substantial range uh, damage range or destruction range for that matter and I'll demonstrate that later Now with the D3 model things become a lot more interesting. It has another fuselage, it has a bigger engine and it has some armor protection. But of course because of the increased armor and uh, weaponry that also means the weight increase so the flight performance is the same. Although the B and R model they do turn better than this one because it is just heavier now. Instead of 1000 rounds for the machine guns firing forward, now we have 2000 rounds. And you have two uh, machine guns for the rear gunner, also with 2000 rounds. 
and it can carry much more ordnance. If you look at it, I even had to move the window around since there was no room otherwise. Um, you have so many options now for bomb loads. You can carry up to 1,500 kilograms of bombs equal to 3,000 pounds. The last and ultimate Stuka is the D5 and it sits at 3.3. Now I played much flies as the D3, although it's a little bit heavier if you use the gun parts just because of the drag and increased weight. Weapon wise this one has a huge upgrade. Instead of the two 7.92mm machine guns you now have two 20mm cannons with 1000 rounds. Of course are the German MG151s and you have access to high explosive and armor piercing rounds as well. The rear gunner once again has two machine guns for 2000 rounds of ammo, which is plenty. And if you equip them with uh, armor piercing rounds, anything that uh, attacks you from behind can be shut down quickly. You can of course use this one as a bomber, but it would be a shame and in my opinion don't do it. So the primary role should either be bomber hunting or going head to head with other fighters. Usually when a fighter sees a uh, Stuka at, you know, bomber height spawn, they think it's going to be an easy win, but you know, once they get close enough and if they don't realize it, you can kill them so damn fast with uh, 6 20mm with high explosive rounds. It's just incredible. You have access to two different kinds of gun parts. Like I said, either 4 20mm cannons or 12 machine guns of a uh, 7.92 caliber. For bomber hunting and head-ons with fighters, I would just use the cannons since you get access to high explosives. For ground attacking, I would probably also use the cannons since you have uh, armor-piercing ones. But the 12 machine guns are also very useful. And a quick tap with the mouse button and you pretty much kill all soft targets with the 12 machine guns. You just need to have some trigger control because the ammo goes pretty damn fast. So the first bomb has a mass of 50 kilograms and half of that is TNT. Radius of the destruction of armored vehicles is 2 meters. That basically means that in order for you to score a kill with a 50 kilogram bomb, you need to pretty, pretty much put the bomb in the lap of the driver or commander or gunner. You need to hit the vehicle physically with the bomb, otherwise you can forget about it. Even a near miss is a no-go. The most common bomb in the game is probably this one, with 250 kilograms of 500 pound bomb. It has a TNT equivalent of 125 kilograms. The radius of destruction of armored vehicles is 5 meters. And if you look at the picture, that's basically the length of a, of a tank, or this, in this instance a T-34. You do need to be pretty precise with this 250 kilogram bomb, as you can see if the blackened area of those 5 meters do not touch the tank, then it's a no-go on a kill. In order for you to score multiple hits or kills with this one, the tanks pretty much need to be on top of each other. Or of course, if it's a soft skin vehicle, then they'll get killed further out. The 500 kilogram bomb, which has a TNT equivalent of 360 kilograms, is a big step up from the 250 kilogram bomb. The radius of destruction of armored vehicles is 11 meters, 
and by the picture here you can see that with this you can definitely afford to do a near miss or it will actually hit up to 11 meters away and you will still potentially score a kill. So with 500 kilograms there's a much bigger chance that you can kill multiple vehicles with one hit. So this bomb is much more forgiving if you make uh, aiming mistakes in RB. Another thing that really starts to become noticeable now is the radius of fragment dispersion. 100, 143 meters. That means that even if you are not even close to a killing uh, blow on a tank or vehicle, you are still able to mark them for anybody else and then score or hit on a periscope or a gun or something. So the last bomb is the 1000 kg bomb. It has a TNT equivalent of 600 kg. The radius of destruction of armored vehicle is 21 meters. The radius of fragment dispersion is 270 meters. And as you can see here, um, I scored a kill and the vehicle wasn't even in the black and burst damage radius. It was actually outside of it. And that is pretty insane. To notice the max armor penetration high explosive action is 175 millimeters. Now that number also has increased uh, when the bomb load has increased and uh, with this you know penetration ability plus the range I mean this is a thing that can wipe out anything that's around a capture point. So if a typical armored vehicle at BR 1.7 or 2.0 has maybe 50 millimeters of armor, this is going to completely overwhelm it. So this is like having a mini nuke at 1.7. Every time I aimed directly on the target of the 250 kilogram bomb, this happened. Now I hope this is not confusing to you. What I mean by this is that you are flying from the right to the left and the X marks where you need to release the bombs in order to hit the tank. To release the bomb about a tank length in front of the tank and this is because the bombs are being released underneath the Stuka with a cradle. The cradle swings the bomb forward before it drops it. Now the 1000 kg bomb and the ones that are mounted underneath the wings those you can pretty much aim directly at the tank and score a hit, well hopefully. Okay, you made it this far. So you approach the target at around 1500 meters. Minimum, I would say, is 1000 meters. Once in a dive, you only have a few seconds to make corrections. So if you're in doubt, then just start up at higher altitude. Minimum bomb release is 300 meters above the target. Otherwise, you won't be able to pull out again. When you get close, then change the camera direction so you're looking at your plane from upside. 
and you're looking completely vertically down at the target. When the target merges with the front of your wing, pull back the throttle pretty much to idle, roll over, start diving, and then use your diving brakes. Aim about a tank's length in front of the target and remember to pull out again at minimum 300 meters above the target. Retract your dive brakes and full speed ahead. And congratulations, if you didn't kill yourself, you should have hit the target. And that concludes my little guide on the Stuka dive bomber. Now you can of course use techniques on other dive bombers as well, especially if they're having uh, diving brakes applied. I had a lot of fun making the videos and I did learn something and maybe you did too. Be so kind and give it a like, make a comment, or you can go overboard and even subscribe to my little channel. Until next time, have a good one.